Did you know that if you own a car, you can do whatever you want with it? Even if it's an old classic. Sometimes all you need is a little bit of cutting. Welcome back to the Skid Factory. We've seen the car, we've talked about the engine, we know what it is. Now we get to rip the lid off this crate and check out the new heart for the Hulkasuka. It's the evolution of the Hulkasuka, Alan. The evolution of it? Step one. Is it an Evo? Open it up. Dude, that looks so good. It's got like, it's got bath plugs. What'd you call that? Bath plugs. <laughs> so you don't have to put tennis balls in there. We dismantled the crate and got the engine out, threw it up on the stand here so we can get a better look at it. Uh, as we said, it's new to us as well. We haven't actually seen it in completed form, so had a bit of a sticky beak over it. I've never actually really seen one of these apart from Matt Hartley's um, because they're not really an Australian engine, so we don't get to see a lot of this sort of stuff. The engine started out as a, I think it was about 2008 Nissan Titan VK56DE, so it's basically a truck engine in the States. We did get the VK56 later on in about in 2014 or something in the, in the Y62 Patrol, but it, it's a fair, fair bit different to this. They continue to develop them with a lot more valve train technology and that sort of thing. But this is a fairly simple one as far as they go. Um, and it's also been simplified quite a bit more by Hartley's for race engine use. Uh, it doesn't have variable cam timing anymore. You can see these billet plates over the front here that normally would have all sorts of variable cam timing solenoids and sensors and stuff all over it. So that, that gets removed and, and is then uh, replaced with uh, adjustable cam gears. So they just dial the cams, which are of their own design as well, in to their own specs. Uh, the bottom end of the engine is relatively standard. In fact, Nelson described this engine as a pretty basic street engine for by their standards, they, they build like top end race engines with billet cranks and all sorts of stuff out of these. And that wasn't our brief. We didn't need an engine like that. This is gonna be more than enough for that car as it is. So pretty much just obviously bottom end rebuild with clearances and, and whatnot to go along with the usage. So it's gonna rev pretty hard. It's got new OEM pistons, and which they then uh, machine to um, allow for the increased valve lift and it's got uh, forged rods to uh, sort of account for the high revving nature of the engine. Camshafts are all custom Hartley spec for a road engine and of note with this engine is that it is it's not very high compression it's only 9.7 to 1 which is I think is actually slightly less than the than the standard engine probably from machining the, the valves pockets so it'll run on anything and still make power. So that's kind of one of the, one of the briefs was we didn't have to run it on crazy fuel, just, just pump fuel, pull up anywhere, um, not, not even E85. Up top, this is where all the bling is, I would, I would, I would say. Um, obviously, individual throttle bodies. Most of their race engines don't use throttle bodies. They, they, they're carbureted with big high ram intakes, so... Um, this is very much a road engine sort of spec thing. These throttle bodies are all made in-house by Nelson at Hartley's. And of note is you'll notice the black 
inlet manifold. These are actually 3D printed from a carbon fibre reinforced nylon. It's obviously not the kind of stuff that you make dick and balls valve caps out of. It's high-end stuff and was made with a, with a very expensive machine. And it's also of Nelson's own design as well, so he's um, a bit of a thinker and he likes to look at doing things different ways. Beauty of stuff like this is very light, it's very easy, it's a lot less wasteful than machining aluminium and it's also got your heat um, properties of taking heat out of the, the throttle body from the engine. I'd say the majority of, of the VK56s that they build at Hartley's would run a carburetor because they're being used in a specific type of motorsport. But this one has um, port injection as the engine would have had when it was built. The later model versions of these like in the Y62 patrols are direct injected and they have some very, very complicated valve train uh, control on them as well. So most people that are going to fiddle around with an engine like this are going to use an older version out of a, out of a Titan or a Frontier as this one is uh, power wise it um, makes pretty good power for not much compression uh, i think it's torque wise uh, 420 pound feet if do i have to convert to newton meters surely everyone's got google for 420 pound feet at 3500 and 450 at 5500 and uh, peak power is 570 horsepower at 8000 rpm so that's on an engine dyno, so it's not a chassis dyno. So it'll be interesting to see once we get it in the car and running and we can stick it on a hub dyno and also maybe on a, a, um, a roller dyno to see what the differences are. But I think it's going to be pretty ridiculous in that car uh, and I imagine that this is going to sound absolutely amazing. Transmission wise, uh, we have chosen to use a uh, Tremec TR6060, which is from, in Australia, we have them in VE Commodores and VF Commodores. Um, this bell housing has been custom made by Nelson. As you can see, it's um, cut out of plates, indexed, welded, and then um, CNC machined at the end for accuracy. We've got a, some special bits to go on the, on the transmission to adapt it into this car as well, which we'll show you when we get that far. Uh, but for now, there's not much more we can do but drain all the schmutz out of that engine if there's any left in it and pull the whole drive line out so we can then throw this in there and see what we're up against. I've measured this up probably three years ago in Gav's garage. Just tape measured up the engine bay and stuff, but you just don't know until you get in there and uh, put the thing in place what you're up against. We may need to change the steering from box to rack. We, the, we, anything could happen, so... We need to get it out, drop this in, and make a game plan. Looks the same as the president mirrors. There's an elephant in the room, Woodrigos, and it has peroxided hair. A change is as good as a holiday, Alan. Get outside your comfort zone. Do it. I don't have a comfort zone because I've got no hair. I think that's everything should come out. Hey. We 
should measure the weights because we always say we should have measured it, but we never do. Oh, weigh the engines. Weigh both of them and the gearbox. We'll take a guess. Hang on, stop. What do you reckon? How much do you reckon it's going to weigh? 180. I'm going to go like 140. I'm way off, aren't I? It's iron block. Old. Ooh. 192. Oh, I was way off. Camera adds a few pounds though. Huh? Take the flywheel off. Oh, is that what we do? No, I just want to get it closer to my guess. <laughs> <laughs> You should put one of those bitly links up for um, that crane scale. A eBay link? Yeah. But then change it to um, Rick Roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at you go. Good guess, Alan. Did you wear this before? <laughs> so here's where we stand. We've got the old 2 litre 6, aluminium head, iron block, aluminium 5 speed gearbox, couple of carbies, makes all of 120 horsepower on a good day. Versus the new combo, we've got a 6 speed manual aluminium gearbox, we've got a 5.6 litre all aluminium V8, Makes 570 horsepower on an engine dyno. There's a little bit of weight difference between them. I think it's, what was it? Two, 236. For the L engine, the 2 litre, and 265 for this and, and its gearbox. But what do you reckon the split is? Where do you reckon the weight's coming from? Chuck it in the comments. Tell us what you think. How much does the engine and the gearbox weigh? Do you reckon that this engine's heavier than that engine? Mm. Do you reckon? Comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, where, where do we go now? Um, we're going to chuck the engine in and just get, have a little quick squeeze to see what's up. Um, it's easy. I've measured it up a bit, but you may as well just throw it in once it's hanging off a crane. So let's do that. Have you measured this or are you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna have to come back a bit. Am I sure? No. <laughs> no, you need the clutch price is not to stop this one more. That already looks so good. Get rid of this clutch master. Probably gonna need a reverse cow. A little bit tall. What about a WRX bonnet scoop instead? Yeah, that'd be cool. Or how about a 79 series bonnet scoop? Mm. Wild. No, we just got to pull some more stuff off to let it come down a bit further. The clutch master cylinder. The clutch master cylinder will probably just go over the top of the, the valve cover or the cam covers after we get it in there, but at the moment it's just stopping it from going down. Uh, the steering box is, is potentially an issue, mainly for header clearance later on. So we are investigating steering rack conversions right now. Uh, I've been Googling my eyeballs out, but we just want to chuck it in and have a bit of quick look around and see what's what. The sump's probably going to be too deep. That's also an easy fix, but we'll um, get it in and have a, a look first. The steering box probably won't hurt it, actually. Hey? It probably won't, won't bother it at all, the box. That must be... That's sump on the... Sump on the cross member. Yeah. Quick removal of a couple of things and it's sort of sitting down on top of the cross member now, so that's good. Now we just have to try and figure out gearbox stuff. So we'll start with the bell housing itself and then move on from there. Hey everybody! Is that in your eyes? Almost, almost, almost. I don't know what's going on here. Almost, do it. Hurry up. This is Instagram sorted, isn't it? All done? 99% complete. Just move some stuff around so it doesn't look like it's just sitting there.
you ain't going to fit eight into one headers through there. Doesn't need eight into one. Yeah, Nelson said... No, he didn't. He said try wise, actually. No. He said... Not try wise. So long as you fit eight into one headers in there, it'll sound amazing. Mm. Not as in eight pipes into one collector. No. He said as long as each pipe goes to one exhaust system, it'll be fine. Look... Come on, dude. I don't need to get the anglometer out for this. It's as straight sure. as my number plate on the Pajero. I'm dealing with like a jack stand in a 19 diggity cross member back there, dude. Do you want to roll around in the corner and do it? No, that's why I got you to do it. We've had a fair bit of staring time here. I've just been underneath here checking everything out, trying to figure out what will fit and what could fit and what doesn't fit. Um, the, the sump is a problem, which seems to be a running theme with engine swaps, doesn't it? If you want a front sump, you usually end up with a rear and vice versa. Uh, this, uh, sump's also, it's out of a truck, so it's got a really long, skinny, deep sump, which is not real practical for this vehicle. Um, we think there might be a front sump available for it, but I've, I've put a couple of messages out to various people that know stuff about these engines to, to see um, and that may be a way forward. Uh, it's all to do with the steering of course, the steering's trying to move and the sump's in the way so that's a bit of an issue. Um, I have had a discussion with Gavin that we may have to um, K swap it instead um, just to make it all work but uh, we're still sort of... Did you just say case swap? Yeah. What? K. Like Honda case swap. No. no. K70 rack. Oh. Steering rack. Yeah. What else would I mean if I said case swap? I don't know. Case swap like that engine under the bench over there? Just junk. So in the meantime, I'm going to pull the engine back out and put it back on the stand, and I'll uh, I've got to make a power steering a um, air conditioning bracket for it. Since it's got aircon, we may as well utilise it. Um, I'll negotiate with Gav about whether it has a heater, but we, I'm pretty sure it's not going to because there aren't any heater lines left on the engine. It's all AN fittings now, so uh, that's one thing we don't have to worry about. There might be some issues with the tunnel, with the, just with the sheer, the, just the size of it compared to the size of that transmission. It's a big unit, but that'll have to wait until we uh, can actually get the engine to fit into place. We're not um, going to be shy of hacking into a few things and making stuff work because that's all we can really do. Other than that, other than stick the L series back in it and fail dismally. So. That's probably all we got for this week. We've got a lot of stuff to do. Um, once I get to this stage, that's when I go go researching and, and try and find out what is possible given what we've seen. Until you just throw it in there and check it out, you don't know. So we'll, uh, we'll be back next week, hopefully, with a better game plan. If you're here because there was a Hakusuka on the front thumbnail thing, Thumbnail? Is How long have right? you been YouTubing for now? Well, I'm not really a YouTuber. You're more, you've got bleached blonde hair, so you're probably more of the YouTuber <laughs> than I am. Anyway, so if you're here, if you're new, like, subscribe, all that stuff. Go back and check out our older videos. We've been doing way stupider stuff than this for many years now, so uh, go and have a binge. Um, well, buy merch. Yeah, sure. We're all here. We're done. Wrap it up. All right. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Buy merch. <laughs> like, subscribe. <laughs> Hit the bell. <laughs>
care to explain why there is now an actual crate motor in your crate? It's not a crate motor. Well, it wasn't until I put it in the crate. <laughs> You're laughing at your own head. <laughs> and here we've got 5.6 litre all aluminium V8. 5.6 litre. Did I say that already? Yep. 180 kilogram engine. So that's 181 with a starter motor. Um, with the flywheel and clutch and everything, it was 199. Um, so it's pretty, pretty close. And a 66 kilogram TR 6060. Yeah, the, the 6060 is, is a fatty. It is quite heavy, and you, as you can see, it's it says you seriously a lot larger than that little gearbox. What do you? What is the? What is the winner? What, what do they win in the comment section? High five, crisp. A heart next to the comment. Mm. Mm. What's a heart do? Yeah, and a personal. This means we love it. Personal reply from yourself. Mm. You got to write something schnazzy. Schnazzy, you reckon? Mm. Is that spelled with a S N or S C H N? S C H N. Schnazzy. Mm-hmm. Well, there's where the little extra weight is. Damn. Oh, does that fit in the intake? It's like an eighth of an ounce or something, isn't it? Put it in there. No, it doesn't. I've tried. And then I couldn't get it out. <laughs> it's actually smaller than the intake. That's 56 mil throttle bodies. It's pretty big. 56 VK56? Maybe. Talk to me, Alan. Can't talk now, thinking. You know that your thinking face is a lot like your grumpy face, which is also a lot like your happy face. Which is also a lot like your thinking face. Are you saying it's just my face? Just always the same. It should all be the same because it's all my face. Look at me. <laughs> Got to give a big shout out to our mate Nick over in New Zealand. He was an instrumental part of hooking us up with Nelson so this could all be possible. Uh, Nick, ha Nick has a pretty good handle on the New Zealand car scene. He's been playing around with various things for many, many years. He was also our tour guide over in New Zealand and a very good host. Uh, he has a, his own YouTube channel, which basically covers all the, the workshop stuff that happens in, in various places in New Zealand, a bit more motorsport orientated. Uh, it's a pretty good watch if you, if you want to see what's going on in another country or if you're from New Zealand yourself. So check it out. Read right about here somewhere. Is that right, Woody? That's it. Is that it? Yep. What, about, what happened to here? You can put anything you want there. What? Why do you keep changing the rules all the time? It used to be here, and now it's here. Why, how come it can't be there? I don't, I don't understand this YouTube thing. <laughs>